Hello everyone, my name is Confident and it's great to have you back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement custom authentication in AppSmith. And we're going to do this by building a custom login flow to secure our application. Let's have a quick tour of the app on the screen. Um, taking a look at the application on the screen, you can see this is a login page. And a login page is a custom login page that has been built to secure the main part of our application. So let's go ahead to test this out by logging in. So I'm going to supply my username. This is AppSmith user and my password and then I'm going to click on the submit button and as you can see I'm taking now to the main part of our application the main part of our application has been protected by the login page and to show you that this really works well I'm going to copy the URL of the main page and try to open it up in an incognito window where I'm not logged in so let's open this up and I'm going to paste this in right here and you can see that the application correctly detects that I'm not logged in and it's asking me to log in. So I can click on login button and supply the username and the password. And clicking on the submit button would go ahead to log me in. And now I can access the main page or main part of the application. So let me show you how to do this by actually building this flow together. So the first thing we need to do is to head back to um, a dashboard and what we want to do here is to create the login page so for the first page let's rename this to say login and now we can bring in some widgets to actually build out the UI for the login page so I am going to bring in a form widget let's drag this right here and for the title I'm going to set this to login page and we need a couple of other widgets. So I'm going to bring in the input widget for the username and another input widget for the password. And to serve as labels for these widgets, I am going to bring a text widget that is just going to say username and the other is going to say password. So let's bring this in and call this password. All right, so now we have the input for the username and also the password. And what we can do is to update the uh, data type of input too, which is the second input for the password and set this to be of type password. And now um, any character that is typed into this input is going to be masked as you can see. The next thing we need to do here is to implement the logic that handles the login. And the first thing we need to do to have that done is to integrate with our login API. So let's head over to the API section and create an API that actually does the login in. So I'm going to head over to data sources, create new. I'm going to be creating a new API. So let's call this login API. And this is going to be a post request to my login API endpoint, which is what we have right there. So under the body section, what I need to do is send up the information that the user has imputed from the username field and also from the password field. So for that, I have the identifier. And for its value, I'm going to be pulling that from the first input, which is input one. So this is going to be input one dot text. All right. And next, we also have the password. So this is going to be password. All right. And for its value, I'm going to be pulling it from second input. So this is going to be input two dot text. And there we are currently pulling in uh, the user's username and password. So let's test this out by um, trying to do a login. So I'm going to head back to the application and then put in a username and also a password. And now we have imputed the username and password. Now heading back to the API, I can um, click on the run section and taking a look at the response, you see that we have a JWT response, which contains the user's um, token and also information about the user, such as the user's name, email, and all of that stuff. All right, so now we can go into build this logic and combine it to the submit button such that when the user clicks on the submit button, this API is called and the user's information is stored on the app. So let's head back to build all of this. So for the submit button, I'm going to enable JavaScript because we want to do quite a lot. When this button is clicked on, what we want to do is call the login API. So this is going to be login API.run. 
all right? And when that is successful, we want to do a couple of things. We want to be able to store the user's JWT token into the local store of the application and then make use of that in other parts of the application. So let's do that. So the first thing I would like to do here is to store it in a variable. So this will be const JWT. And I'd like to grab the JWT value from the data returned from the login API. So this is going to be login API.data dot jwt in some cases the user might not have a valued jwt so i'm just going to um, account for that and then what i need to do is to check if the user actually has a valid jwt token so i'm going to say if jwt which is the jwt variable we created um, above if we have a valid jwt what we want to do is to save it in the absent store so this is going to be store value and I'm just going to pass in a key of JWT and its value should be the JWT variable. So this is going to be JWT. And when that's done, we want to navigate the user to the main part of our application. So I'm going to say navigate to and for the page name, this is going to be the main page. And for the parameters I want to pass, query parameters, I'm just going to leave that as an empty object. In cases where the user does not provide the value login credential, I want to be able to tell the user that uh, the credentials were not correct. So I'm going to put an else block. And in this else block, what I'm going to do is to show an alert and let the user know that the password or username is invalid. So I'm going to say invalid username show password and I can set the um, alert type to error. All right, we have that done now. So the next thing I want to do is to build out the main page. And for this, I would need to create a new page. So let's head over to the pages section. I'm going to create a new page and let's call this page main page. All right, now we have the main page. After creating the main page, the first thing I want to do is to make this page hidden. Because if the page is not hidden, um, the login page and the main page would show up side by side when we deploy the application. So I'm just going to show this to you by deploying the current application we're working on. And taking a look at this, you can see that we have the login page showing up here as well as the main page showing up here. We would like to protect the main page, so we're going to make it hidden and then make it only accessible when the user is actually logged in by clicking the submit button. So let's head back and make this hidden. So I'm going to click on the hide button and now the main page is hidden. Now to build up the main page, I am going to bring in a table widget. So I'm just going to drag in a table widget. And here we have the table widget. So let's bring in a text widget to serve as a label for this page. So I'm just going to bring in a text widget right here. And I'm also going to resize this. And for the text, I'm going to say main page and set this to heading two, and we can center this and make this frames. And then we have the text denoting that this is the main page of our application and the table widget. But we actually need to display some application data in the main page. So let us head back to the API section and in the data sources, let's create a new API. And this would be get logistics. All right, so this is going to be a get request and we are going to be hitting the um, get logistics endpoint. Uh, but because this is a secure API, we would actually need to pass in the user's um, JWT token. So for that, we would need to read the value from the store. So we need to add some headers. This is going to be authorization. And this is going to be bearer. Then we can go ahead to grab in the user's JWT token we stored in the AppSmit store from the previous page. So this is going to be appsmit.store.jwt. And this is going to allow us to call our secure API. So to test things out, what we need to do is to head back to the login page and actually perform a login flow so that we have something stored in the AppSmit store. And then we'll come back to this page to um, check out this API. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the login page and I'm going to supply a username and password. And clicking on submit should 
Color API and take us to the main page. All right, now that we're back in the main page, we can check the um, Get Logistics API. And taking a look at this, you see that we now have the user's JWT token stored in the Absent Store, and we can go ahead to make use of this to call our secure API endpoint. So to test this out, I'm going to click on the Run button, and you can see some data is being returned. We have some um, data that is being returned from this API, and now we can go back to the application to make use of this in the table widget. So let's head back to the application. And now we can bring in the data from the Get Logistics API and display it on the table widget. So I'm just going to bring that in right here. So this will be getlogistics.data.rows. And we we'll see the data showing up on the table widget. Now that we have this done, we can actually deploy the app to test it out. To do this, I'm going to head back to the login page and click on the deploy button. And here we can test out what we've built out so far. So this is going to be app Smith user and my password. And clicking on submit should take me to the main page of our application. And here you see that we have the main page showing up. All right, so we have our application working nicely so far. But we have one small issue. The URL of the our main page can be copied and opened up without um, needing to log in. So to show you this, I'm just going to copy over the URL of the main page open up an incognito window and paste this in. And taking a look at this, we have been able to access the main page without needing to log in. So we need to prevent people from being able to do this. Uh, to build this functionality, I'm just going to head back to um, the application, head back to the main page. And what I want to do is to wrap my application inside the container. And then I'll need to perform some checks to see if the user's GWT is in the store. If it is in the store, then user will be allowed to view the application. If not, we do not want to show the user the main page of the application. So to do that, I am going to bring in a new widget. You can use a container widget for this. So I could have decided to bring in all the widgets we have on the page into a container widget. And what I can do right here is that in the visibility property, I can enable JavaScript and do my login logic check right here. But I'm going to use a tab widget because I just want everything to be fancy and look really great. So I'm going to delete this. Now I'm going to bring in a tab widget. And let's resize this and then put the other widgets within it. So I'm going to resize this. And now I'm going to bring in the table widget and place it within it. All right, let's move this to the top. And now I'm going to bring in the main page text within the tabs widget. So I'm going to move this to the top of the app. So let's move this to the top of the app. And there we have our application showing up. So what I want to do is to show different tabs based on the state of the application. If the user is logged in, then I want to show the main tab. If the user is not logged in, then I want to show the login tab. All right. So the logic for the logged in will be done in where it says default tab right here. So um, what I'm going to do is to check if the user is logged in from the AppSmith store. So this will be appsmith.store.jwt. If there's a JWT available in the store, what I want to do is to set the default tab to be the main tab. So this will be main. Else, what I would like to do is to set the default tab to be the login tab. And because right now we are logged in, uh, we have the main tab showing up. So let's head over to the login tab and play some UI to let the user know to log in. So to do that, I am going to bring in a button widget and a text widget. So let's bring in a text widget. And we'll also need a button widget. So I'm going to bring in a button widget. So let's say for the text widget to login. That's the text we want set. And then for the button widgets, I'm just going to move this a bit to the side and say login. And we want it such that when this widget is clicked on, we actually head back to the login page. So we are going to navigate to when this button is clicked on the login page. And there we have everything set up. One more thing I'd like to do on the tabs widget is that I would like to hide the tabs. So here where it says show tabs, I'm just going to click this to turn it off. And there we have the tabs itself hidden. Now we can go ahead to test this application by deploying it. So I'm going to deploy this. And now let's log in. So this is going to be app 
user and the password. And this works great because I am logged in. Now we can go ahead to try to copy the main page URL, open up an incognito window where I'm not logged in. Let's close the previous one and paste this in. And you can see that the application is telling us to go back to login. So we can head back to login. So let's log in. And clicking on the submit button will now actually log us in so that we have access to view the application. All right, so this is how you can implement a custom authentication system in AppSmith. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a like and get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye -bye.